Please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord. So you and I, brothers and sisters, we live in a society where we do a lot of pigeonhole, pigeonholing of human beings. We pigeonhole every other person that we see. You know, I set up an appointment with some group of friends, you know, to meet with, you know, some leader, you know, around the church. And when I wanted, when I was to get a feedback for how the meeting went, this friend of mine said, you know, I couldn't just figure him out. Have you ever said that before? Have you heard somebody say that before? So, you know, so my friend and I, you know, Spencer, we talk about this pigeonhole stuff, you know, like I, for example, so I'm, I'm, I'm having bagel for breakfast, you know, and, and someone says, he loves his bagels. So the next time I, I decide not to have bagels, then I just go for just normal bread, you know, just ordinary bread. And say, I can't just figure him out. Or probably I head off, you know, and just, okay, we we'll have a party. And on this party, I, I decided, no, I'm just going to have a Manhattan, okay? And the next time, I decide to have a Royal Boy, <laughs> or a Guinness, or a beer. So I just can't figure him out. Then who gave you the task of figuring him out? Who laid that burden on you? You decided to lay a heavy burden on yourself because you want to micromanage a human being. You want to pigeonhole somebody. A human being is an ocean of possibilities. A human being is an ocean of potentials. A human being is made in the image and likeness of God. Thomas, the, the apostle, was pigeonholed. Today is pigeonholed. They say the doubting tongues. Did he ever do anything else? Did Thomas ever do anything else? Surely he did. That was the same Thomas whom when Lazarus had died in John chapter 11 verse 16, when Lazarus had died for four days and then the apostles were afraid to go on the way to Judea because Jesus and they will fall into the hands of his enemies. He said, let us go to Judea. Let us go to Jerusalem so that we can die with our friend Lazarus. <laughs> okay? That's the same person. Why? Doubting thoughts. Everybody doubting thoughts. And what kind of doubt was that? Was it doubt of pernicious skepticism? That kind of skepticism that never, you know, yeah. Who was that saying now? Mm, Augustine. He said, oh, Thomas Aquinas. He said, to the one who believes, no explanation is necessary. 
To the one who does not believe, nothing, no, it's not possible to, to make them believe. So, but, can you see Thomas? It was clear that Thomas wanted more. Thomas wanted to be filled more. He wanted clarity. And of course, he was not with the twelve. He was not with a group of apostles. He was not in the church like you are in the church. Anybody who is not in the midst of the apostle, in the assembly, in the dwelling place of God, cannot feel the effect of the risen Lord. You are outside. You are absent. You cannot feel him. You cannot encounter him. So, it was, that was what it is. That was what it was, you know. So, so, so he, was, he was asking this question. And I guess what? His own question, where? To be filled with knowledge of faith. Our faith grows through understanding. Hmm. Thomas. He believed. He trusted. Have you ever met somebody who is asking you a question? And before you finish, he said, that's what I thought. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody who is asking a question, but seem to already know an answer? And he has a reserved answer that he or she thinks is the answer. And you give something else. And they are thrown no balance. Have you, have you met somebody like that? And they say, huh? So if you knew it, why did you ask? They just wanted to elicit the same exact thing that is in their own little brain to get it from you. So you want to do the thinking for me. You were not asking a question. You were asking to be confirmed <laughs> by your own delusion sometimes. And your own confusion sometimes. And your own doubt sometimes. But now I'm coming out with a clear, clear something. And you are blown away. Because you were not expecting that. Thomas was not in that category. Thomas was expecting. He wanted to really get it. And when he got it, the same Thomas flew all the way out of the Roman Empire. Went all the way to India in Kerala to preach. And there he was killed. He was murdered for his faith in the year 80, 72 AD. <laughs> that is the same person. So if we have to get a complete picture of a person, you zoom into the question, what is this person ready to die for? That is the complete question of a human being's life. What am I ready to die for? For my faith? Do I really, really, really trust and believe in the presence of Jesus Christ, in the body and blood of Christ, raised on the altar? Do I have a special belief, trust, confidence that I'm receiving the Lord? Do I? That is the guy who helped us for Jesus to say, Blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. Some of us, as, as doubting as we are, we want, to, we want to see. Can I see? It is when people, that's why people show for Eucharistic miracles everywhere, trying to see Eucharistic miracles. Without that, they cannot believe in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And here we are. <laughs> Give us the Eucharist. Give me my Eucharist. <laughs> Yet it's not like we believe. If we do believe, if we do believe in him, in the Eucharist, this church will be filled every time. Every time. We will speak about him to everyone that we meet. Because I know in America, a good product does not need marketing nor advert. 
People go into a restaurant and talk about it all their life. People go, you know, into a boutique to get clothing or something, they talk about it, or they talk about even the waiters. They talk about how good the waiters are even in the restaurant. How good are our ushers? <laughs> our ushers in church, do we talk about them, how good they are? Do we talk about the homily of a priest, how good they are? Or we complain a lot? So if we do that, people who are sitting with us in the bar, who are sitting with us in the restaurant, know that we do not even have honor for our church because we crucify our church by our tongue everywhere we go. How will they go with us? <laughs> we want to evangelize. And the central piece of our evangelization, Jesus Christ crucified under Pontius Pilate, the same Jesus who is present to us 24-7. Every time we celebrate Mass, we have doubt about it. If we doubt him, if we are confused about him, nobody will be convinced along with us because we ourselves doubt. Preach the word. If you don't understand the word, we cannot preach it. We cannot live it. We cannot die for it, like Thomas did. Let us rise to prove to our prayers of the faithful.